Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about our summer 2020 official forecast. I'm very excited to present this one to you guys. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, what are your predictions for this summer from June 1st all the way through the end of August? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get started with this video, and first things first, we're going to get into our precipitation forecast. Now, our first area here is a below average precipitation region, and this is a slightly below average precipitation region. And that's going to be for the Pacific Northwest in through the Rockies as well. And again, this is going to be a slightly below average precipitation region, which indicates it could be near normal or feel like normal, but on paper, it will be below normal precipitation. And we don't have a second layer for here because my confidence isn't as high for this region here having below average precipitation. My analogs this year, which if you're wondering what my analogs going into this year is, it's 2013 and 2016. Uh, they both indicate that we could have some drier than normal conditions for this region. And then also my climate models that I use are also calling for more below average precipitation here. But our confidence is a little bit lower because we are headed into a La Nina, which would usually cause above average precipitation for this region. So I do think there is a chance uh, that this ends up being a little less accurate. But I, as of right now, both of my main models and then also my both of my analogs are calling for below average precipitation so i'm going to slightly side with them uh, on this one now we're about to move on and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our above average precipitation region uh, and we're actually going to have two layers of those so we're about to get into those and talk about where we could see some more precipitation compared to what is typical Here is our above average precipitation region, and you can see basically for the, th the eastern third of the United States, we're going to be dealing with at least some slightly above average precipitation, with maybe the exception there of northern New England as well as northern New York State. Uh, those areas look to be a little bit less involved with the major storm track that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, but really the Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, a lot of the northeastern United States and the Mid-Atlantic and then down through the southeastern United States are all going to be dealing with some slightly above average precipitation. But once again, this is our slightly above average precipitation region, so it might feel a lot closer to normal. But on paper, we will be dealing with some above average precipitation within this entire region. All right, now here's our second layer of above average precipitation. And this is just an area where we're more confident in that above average precipitation. Uh, my models and my analogs kind of disagreed a little bit with the slightly above average precipitation region. They weren't as sure that we would have it. Uh, but for the southeast and the southern mid-Atlantic, I guess you could call it, they definitely were all in agreement that this area would have some above average precipitation. So therefore, my confidence is a lot higher for this more southeastern region to have some above average precipitation. Also, if there is any tropical storms or hurricanes that impact any areas, that could definitely swing this one in a completely different direction. For instance, if Southern Texas, uh, the, the coastal Texas there, got hit by a hurricane or something, well, then they would probably be in the above average precipitation column. However, we can't really forecast whether they will be hit with one or not, especially if it's in like August or something. It would be impossible for me to obviously forecast that to happen. So that's something that could happen that could shake our forecast up a lot. All right, now we're about to move on and we're going to get into our temperature forecast, our official temperature forecast here for the summer of 2020. Again, June 1st through the end of August is where this forecast is going to be valid for. So we're about to get into our exciting temperature forecast. Now, first things first, we're taking a look at our above average temperature region here. And you can see for the Pacific Northwest down through the southwestern United States, as well as most of the four corner states as well, we're all going to be dealing with some slightly above average temperatures. And the reasons for this is that we have very warm waters off of the west coast of the United States. And those warm waters are going to influence the air temperature, which we all know moves usually from west to east. So those are going to come onshore to the western United States and cause our air temperatures usually to be above average temperatures. And we've been dealing with these warm waters offshore for the most part for almost 10 years now. So you might be wondering why we've had consistently warmer than normal temperatures for a very, very long time for most of the west coast most of the time at least, uh, and that's why we've had these very warm waters offshore. 
Now, we even have a moderately above average temperature region here uh, for a lot of the western United States, and it's going to be a little bit more inland. Uh, so we're going to be dealing with Washington, Oregon, California, uh, Nevada, as well as some areas in Idaho and Utah. And then most of Arizona and New Mexico are going to be dealing with these moderately above average temperatures. And this is just an area where we're a little bit more confident that we will be dealing with some above average temperatures there. It could get very, very hot at times. Now, here's another area where we're going to be calling for some above average temperatures here for New England and then down through a lot of the coastal northeastern and mid-Atlantic states. That's an area where I think we will have some at least slightly above average temperatures there. Uh, this is just an area where my models and my analogs were very, very confident in some above average temperatures for the immediate coast right there. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and call for. Uh, we definitely see a very small region there, so it could be closer to normal, but I do think that we will see some above average temperatures nearby that region. All right, now we're about to move on and start talking about our below average temperature regions and get into that. All right, and here's an area where we're going to be talking about some slightly below average temperatures here. And you can see for a lot of the north central and then a lot of the plains like the central United States, the very, very middle of the United States, all of these areas are an area where I'm expecting some slightly below average temperatures at least. Now, I must tell you guys, I was very much so thinking about extending this eastward through the Ohio Valley and into some of the, um, the very western mid-Atlantic states, the western portions of the mid-Atlantic states. However, the models are trending at these areas being a little bit warmer than normal, especially throughout June and July. Uh, but by the time we reach August, I could see the cold moving further and further east as we head towards the fall season. That's kind of what I'm thinking at this point. My first fall forecast, by the way, is going to be coming out at some point during the month of June. So be on the lookout for that one. I know a lot of you are probably excited for that, as I am as well. Uh, and I can't wait to produce that one for you guys. But we are going to be talking about the potential for this cold air mass to move a little bit further east as the PDO, again, that positive PDO, those warmer temperatures off the west coast, enhance and intensify. That could be something we're looking at moving forward to towards the fall and winter months. All right, we even have a second layer here with some below average temperatures, and this is mostly going to be for the plains. And again, this is just an area where we're more confident in the below average temperatures, according to my analogs and my models. All right, now we're about to move on, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our hurricane outlook. As of now, I am going to be updating that again at some point during the month of June, giving you guys my final hurricane forecast, but I'm going to give you guys an update on my most recent hurricane forecast, as well as how many storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes we're expecting, and then we're going to get into that exciting overall summer 2020 forecast. All right, and here we go. First things first, we're taking a look at our overall forecast for the hurricane season of 2020. Again, I will be updating this one probably within the next month at some point during June. I'm going to be making my final and official hurricane season forecast for 2020. So be on the lookout for that one. But this is our most up-to-date maps we have. That red area is what we call our main development region. Uh, and this is a very favorable area looking forward towards the hurricane season. We have a lot of warmer than normal sea surface temperatures out there that will help feed the hurricanes that develop out there. As well as we're heading into a La Nina, which also encourages less wind shear over these regions, which is going to help these storms intensify and not really have wind that they have to battle against. Now, for this orange region offshore of Central America, we have warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, which could help development of some tropical storms and hurricanes for those regions. In our blue area here for the South, Central, and Southeastern United States, as well as the Deep South States, we have the best chance for a landfall within these regions, just because the Gulf is really going to be very warm, and I think that a lot of these storms could head into the Gulf and head up there. And the East Coast is a wild card. We really need to see if we have a high pressure system in place that will help these storms curve up the coast. If we don't have that, all of them are going to head into the co into the Gulf. Sorry. And if we do have it, then a lot of them could curve up the East Coast. So that's really a wild card that we will have to see once we get closer to the hurricane season. And I have, a, I might have a little bit more insight on that in my final hurricane forecast that I mentioned before. All right, and here's how many storms we're expecting for this season. Uh, we are expecting 14 to 20 named storms, which is above average. We are expecting 7 to 11 hurricanes, which is above average, and 4 to 7 major hurricanes, which is also above average. So we're expecting more storms to develop overall this season. 
All right, now for our 2020 summer forecast, overall forecast, here we go. I'm going to work it from west to east, and starting out in the northwestern United States through the Rockies, we're expecting more dry than normal conditions throughout that entire brown region, but of course you saw that in our precipitation forecast. Now for the southwest and the, the four corner states, we're expecting hot and mostly dry conditions throughout this orange region there and by hot and dry i mean more hot and more dry than what is typical now for our big blue region there we're expecting some cool shots throughout the summer that will cool things off and make it very very pleasant probably 70s when we see these cool shots come down it'll be very relieving because sometimes we could have some uh, big heat waves to the south as you can see for texas and louisiana those could extend further north but really overall we're going to have mostly cool shots for that blue region now, we even have a light blue region there for some of the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and in through the more, I guess, central regions of uh, New York, as well as the very western regions of Pennsylvania. And that's where we're going to have some more cool later uh, conditions. And what I mean by that is later on in the summer, mostly the later portions of July and August, I think things could start to get more and more cool as we head towards the fall months. Because again, I'm expecting that cold area to mostly make its way eastward throughout the summer. Now, for that green region, we have thunderstorms, and by thunderstorms, I mean more thunderstorms than what is typical. I would have said that right there, but it was a very small region, so you wouldn't have even been able to read the words if I made them any smaller. For our pink region here, for a lot of the Gulf states and uh, the East Coast, we have above average tropical activity for the entire Atlantic Ocean, so this would cause above average chances for tropical activity in the the coasts of the gulf and the east coast does this mean that we will for sure have landfalling hurricanes no it does not we will not for sure have landfalling hurricanes however the chance for them to occur will be a bit higher than what is typical and last but not least for the northeastern and new england states we have hot conditions expected more hot than what is typical all right now for today's comment of the day i asked you guys do you guys prefer when you see an upcoming cool down coming up or a upcoming warm-up coming up and john smith said a cool down by far because he can sleep better and i definitely agree i sleep a lot better when my room is in the 60s rather than the 70s so when it's colder it's easier for my room to be colder obviously and i just sleep a lot better overall anyway guys thank you so much for watching this video again be sure to share it with your friends family and social media i will see you guys in the next video